Hi there tankers and tankers, this is Iron Lord Ming coming at you with another World of Tanks console video. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Brick, the tier 8 mercenary heavy tank premium, uh, which I believe goes for a sale price of 12,980 gold. And as always, you're going to be asking the question, is this tank worth the gold? Well, in short, no, it's really not worth the gold, um, to be honest, um, but I will get into that later on in the video. But just to summarise, what is the brick about? So, it's a tier 8 um, mercenary heavy tank, comprising of the whole of an E50 medium tank. Um, so, you have got some really nice plate armour at 150mm slope back at 55 degrees. Uh, the turret of an I6, which is a big, big weak spot since it's only 140 at the thickest point and um, the gun of the Soviet T-44-100 uh, so it's got the 100mm LB-1 gun though albeit with a little bit more penetration due to some buffs this tank has received uh, in the past so yeah so w w why is this tank not worth it in my opinion well to be honest it all comes down to the actual statistics of the vehicle how the vehicle plays and a number of issues the stats and everything presents um specifically um looking at the um, mobility of the vehicle the mobility of the vehicle is rather bad but we'll dig into that a bit more soon uh the fact like i said turret armor is really not the best and um, of course you know we can go from there in regards to everything else so starting stats um penetration 270 millimeters base 247 with apc on 50 of he damage is 250 250 and then 330 respectively it has 1500 hit points uh 350 view range and 40 kilometers per hour top speed um, with a base accuracy of 0 0.36 engine power is 810 meters uh, sorry 810 uh, giving you a 40 uh, 40 kilometers an hour top speed hold reverse is 24 degrees and signal range is 730 meters so like i say on, on paper it doesn't look too bad though like i say we'll dig into that a bit more soon um, armor wise 200 millimeters on turret ring 150 upper plate uh, 100 millimeters on the lower plate 140 on the turret 80 on the sides and then you've got a uh, 10 millimeters and 5 millimeters of space armor all around the vehicle respectively so um in terms of the armor value while um, the armor is, doesn't seem like say too terrible on paper, unfortunately that turret is a big weak spot, and of course with it being an E50 hull, uh, that low plate is not going to live up to much punishment. Um, side armor though is good enough to side scrape from, so that's not too bad. Like so the upper plate will bounce a lot. Um, also, it is a premium tank, of course, so you do get um, some bonuses, 10% XP bonus and 50% credits. And um, in terms of the um, modules, pretty much going to show where they're all located now. Ammo racks on the sides, of course. And, of course, you have a 5 man crew. Uh, standard setup, pretty much, you know, a driver, gunner, loader, commander, etc. Though it doesn't really come into effect unless, you know, someone's lucky enough to hit one of those spots and knock out uh, one of your crew. Uh, base stats wise, um, you've got some bonuses here. So you've got a top, like I say, top speed of 40, uh, base accuracy is 0.34, aim time of 2.3 seconds, uh, rate of fire of 7.7, um, yeah, 7.7 second reload, sorry, with 7.79 rounds per minute, and again, depression of 5.2 degrees, which is another negative of this vehicle. Though, the killing thing about this vehicle, the thing that ruins this thing completely, is the terrain resistors. Um, just look at those terrain resistors 2.7 on soft terrain, uh, 1.7 even on medium terrain, basically means you're not going to get that full 24 degrees of um, hold reverse, regardless of what happens, basically. Um, you do get a shell velocity of 880 uh, meters per second for your AP and high explosive. 1100 with your APCR, and of course, with it being the standard classic game mode, maximum gun range of 720 meters. So, uh, those are all things to consider in terms of building this tank. Um, well, since it is a premium, you're going to be reusing uh, one of your Merc crews you've got lying about, or you're going to be training up a new Merc crew. In terms of the skills, uh, since the crew we work, I'd recommend a standard setup for heavy tank. So, you're going to be taking advantage of Brothers and Arms just to buff everything by 10%. Snap shot and smooth ride to make the accuracy as best as you possibly can. Um, Off-road driving and clutch braking to improve the train resistances and the um, whole rotation as best as you can and uh, to improve this acceleration a little bit. Steady aim for again general accuracy, rapid fire for DPM, 
situational awareness um just to buff up the view range a little bit though um like i say you're not probably going to be not using optics on this vehicle just because the view range is that bad and then of course repairs just for general survivability reasons because it's always good to have repairs on your tank uh, especially with the heavy or medium though you can sometimes get away with it just to make sure if you are in a situation where you're tracked and your repair gets on cooldown uh, of course you can get out of trouble equipment loadout Normally, I would probably go for something like Rama vs. Labs Optics on a heavy tank or Rama vs. Labs Events. Uh, but given the introduction of the new mobility equipment, I decided to drop the event for uh, improved traction control instead. So that gives me 10% extra top speed and 10% to hold traction. Just trying to again improve the biggest weakness of this vehicle, which is the terrible mobility and performance of the uh, of the you know whole traverse and everything. So um, that was the main thing we've done. Um, of course, consumables wise, we've just gone repair kit, um, med kit, and fuel. You can opt the fuel out for rations, which I would usually do personally when I do um, have been running this tank. Normally, I do run it with rations, though, just because of the new mobility equipment, I decided, you know, why not give fuel a go just to try and make the mobility as best we can. And here are the amended stats. So, with everything set up the way we have, we've improved the top speed to 44 kilometers an hour and the reverse speed to 16.5. And of course, we've increased the right fire to 9.26 rounds per minute which means we've reloaded in about 6.2 seconds and the accuracy is also improved as well down to 0.24 accuracy so uh, pretty much does turn the thing into a little bit of a laser beam uh, though that's you know, to be expected um, of course on top of that um, we've also increased the viewing range somewhat um, because situational awareness that's now 371 meters uh, you could improve that further by using optics but like I say with the view range as poor as it is at 350 meters even with optics you're only going to max out at around 400 meters ish uh, view range but yeah first battle so like i say this tank does have many weaknesses specifically looking at the gun depression uh, the gun depression in my opinion should be about seven degrees um given the fact you've only got a 100 mil gun in an i6 turret so you should have more than enough leeway to get seven degrees gun depression would would go a long way in making this vehicle uh actually quite competitive uh, as that's one of the main downsides and the other um main shoe of this vehicle which pretty much kills like I say it's the train resistances and I think if all gaming were to buff this tank again in future because it does sort of need it taking a look at those train resistances would be a must because if you can improve the train resistances and it gets its uh, theoretical um, mobility um, it would go a long way in improving this vehicle um, and obviously making it more viable so that being said let's get into the rest of the video so um of course like i say we're on pilsen um we're using the traction improvement well traction mobility equipment so that gives us 10 percent extra top speed and 10 percent extra hull rotation and of course we're using fuel and off-road driving and even even, even the, then you can see here this vehicle is struggling massively to attain its top speed due to those poor train resistances and the terrible horsepower button um so here we're just about going 30 kilometers per hour well whereas if we're on any of the heavy tank if we're on the tiger 2 for example we'd be going 40 right now even probably more than that if we we're using the same equipment setup uh but you know is what it is uh we're just trying to move into position here we've just part of the corner i see a century in up ahead um trying to take a snapshot to the puller fortunately the bison gets in the way and then we miss our opportunity um to hit him so we missed the shot which is fine you know it does happen it is world of tanks 50 tp uh prototype to the left there and then we've got a tiger hammer up the head with a centurion on that corner now i make a big miscalculation here miscalculation here as i overexpose my lower plate which is a big no-no in this tank as what you want to do is you're going to hide want to hide that as much as possible so unfortunately because i was overexposing that lower plate and uh, exposed myself a bit too much past this cover though i was hoping to be at an angle so that he would bounce off and i'd be somewhat protected against the tp um he does punish me for it so i do lose um you know half my hit points there for no reason basically but um i do hit the hammer back a couple times do about thousand damage to him um get a nice snapshot onto the centurion there and um, we're doing another 200 or damage so not now 1300 trouble like cover this evening quite nice for my other hammer but he is more than safe and unfortunately i did take a hit from that 50 tp 
MVP as well. So um, we're in a sort of bad situation here. Like say this game is kind of average in terms of performance level, um, just because of the fact that again this the vehicle is kind of bad. Um, it's not really something I would go for um, if I had the opportunity. Like I say, if you do do get it free in a key card, uh, you know that's fine, I guess. But even then, I guess you know there are some people out there if they do get this in a key card, they'd be like, what the fuck? I'd rather take the gold or um, even get something else. So I completely get where you're coming from, but you know, if you get this in a key card, it's not really much of a reward, is it? Um, at least in the current state, which is why I really hope all gaming um, do take another look at this thing and buff it again in the future uh, by giving it a bit more gun brush and it's definitely going to be fine. Um, and you know, just improving that horsepower turn somewhat. Um, well, or even, you know, just buffing the train resistances so we can go that 40 km an hour, um, you know, that would be a, a good thing uh, to happen to this vehicle. Um, alternatively, maybe buffing this her armor as well, you know, but then again, like I say, even the standard I6 does need a buff, uh, at least up to the armor up to the level, say something like the Hydra, just so it's, you know, it's competitive again, but it is what it is. Um, but either way, um, push up here so you can execute the 50 TP. Get a nice shot into him, which is rather nice, so that is good. And um, then once we get a shot into him, we take the kill, and then we push on to engage the Tiger Hammer. So push on to his lower plate, um, he goes down, and then we push the corner to engage the Centurion. Now, we should have 100% died here because the Centurion could have easily ruined us by shooting our lower plate. Luckily, he bounces. Uh, we're in the big tug mode, so he can't hit our lower plate, and he doesn't know about the turret weak spot. So we put up a shot into him and then he gets hit by a teammate, goes down to 20 HP and we secure the ram kill. So with all that being said, you know, like I say, kind of average performance here, 2,400 damage, 1,600 assists and a tiny bit of spotting. Um, you know, it's it's not the best performance, you know, if I was in, say, anything else or even like, like say, another tier eight heavy, but like Defender, IS-3, Tiger 2, pick, take your pick, you will you know, Given the sort of situation you were in, we probably would be on like 3k plus, I aren't honestly. Um, and it's not, not nothing really wrong with the DPM. Um, the DPM in this vehicle is fine, it's just the really, really, really shoddy mobility which lets it down. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is, you know, it, it is not like the best vehicle anyway. Um, if, like I say, if it, if it did have those buffs, it would be fine, but. You know, and, and it's probably the reason why, uh, again, this thing's underplayed and why the MOE we were to below the at the moment is about 2.2k to 3 months, so that's sort of the reason why I decided to get back into it as well. Um, but yeah, you know, fourth best player on the team, not the best at performance, but we do make a nice little profit there on 40k, uh, which is nice with a booster. And then we move on to Vineyards. So Vineyards, unlike the previous battle, uh, this time it's a tier 9 battle, uh, it's a tier 8, which is fine. Um, Given it is vineyards, I do want to try and be aggressive and push the town, though it doesn't quite work out as planned. And, uh, you know, just go from there, see what we can do with this vehicle. So, when it comes to the brick, you know, as I've pointed out already, there are a number of flaws of this vehicle. And the fact that it was, uh, you know, again, it's 12,980 uh, 12, gold as well is, you know, kind of a, a turn off as well. Um, and the fact is as well, if you want to play in you know, the tier premiums doing credits, are way better alternatives to this thing. If you want to try an emotionary crew, if, if you you know when event contracts do eventually come back, although they're currently in a infinite state of coming soon, uh, though you know they will probably come back at some point. You know, if you want to get you get unlock a new merc tank and you want to train a crew, um, I've got a simple solution for you. Get, play the absolution instead it's far better for that sort of thing and it's way more competitive to the point of um nearly being completely overpowered but uh and you know it's a tier 6 premium so it's a lot cheaper than this thing anyway so yeah that definitely an option um or even just going for something like trinity um any any of the other milk tanks you know really or even just play the tech tree ones you know the you eventually get a good crew do it by playing those anyway, uh, especially if you use boosters, you know, all, all the better alternatives to using this thing, if I'm honest. But yeah, here we are. So we're on vineyards. Uh, we do take a shot um, to the side on the way here. Um, I did want to be more progressive and push the left, the left lane, but fortunately um, I saw where the support was going and uh, decided, you know, bet, best to try and get under the gun as best we can and take a position here. Start trying to do, do some damage to the T25AT, and it does go somewhat well. Do get two shots into him um, before he gets away from us. 
and then we then tried to sniff out a target on the SG-130, it doesn't really go anywhere, see the T-30 above, realise that's a big threat, start going for him. So he, he takes a shot um, from myself, backs up, left PTA pops up, I try to fight him, I miss unfortunately, and you know we just try to dig in here to get another guns, and then a world light tank appears. <laughs> and so goes the meme. Uh, T-54 lightweight pushes, I hit him back, do some 200 damage to him, so in this situation we've done about 1000 damage, we've actually got a 1000 assist here as well which is kind of nice, and uh, we've blocked some damage as well, get another shot into the T-30, his shot hits the dirt, and I peek him again, fortunately Arthur already puts, um, well, puts that plan under duress, so because I take a hit from him, and I'm kind of in a situation where I want to be aggressive, but I just know I can't. I can't be aggressive. Um, I'm not in a position to just because the fact where the team, my team is deployed, uh, they, they, they're a long way from providing support to myself. And it, again, I'm pretty isolated here, though that's partially my fault anyway. But you know, I should have kind of realised it's vineyards. My team are probably going to camp, and uh, you know, maybe shouldn't have pushed. But even then, it wouldn't really change the result of this battle anyway. I don't think. Uh, Arthur really tries to take. Take another poke at me, is what it is, artillery is artillery, uh, not going to comment much more than that, and then I decide, you know what, maybe it's time to get out of that position because I'm clearly exposed to artillery and try to be more aggressive, and here is where the gun depression will let me down immensely, because peeking up this ridge, in pretty much most other tanks, um, you know, I would have the gun depression to hit this T-30 right now, uh, fortunately I have to peek a little bit further, um, pretty much expose my entire side to get the shot, Seeing his turret turn towards my backup, which basically completely screws my shot over. Um, he fires, I peek him again, hit him. I then get tracked, hit in the side, and then hit again by the T30. Though luckily he's only got the 120mm equipped, which is not the worst in the world. Though kind of surprised by the fact he has the 120 equipped, because so he even unlocked that prior to 6.0, or he's actively using it as a top gun, though. Why wouldn't you use the 155? I don't know, but whatever. And um, then we have T44 that pops up with the 122. Look, I'm really lucky there though, he's using the 122, so it basically minimizes his threat level completely. I get a few shots into him. Teammate finally sh like, gives him support and shoots him as well, and then I get the kill. But from this point forward, this game is effectively over. Um, just because of the fact that while I'm on like 2.1k damage, 1.5k assist, which is you know, not bad performance to be honest for a tier 8 heavy, um, I'm still completely isolated, though I do knock out the Leopard PTA there, uh, securing another 200 odd damage. Um, the fact is I'm completely isolated, my team is collapsing on all around, uh, in fact they're basically about to go like down fully very soon and um, then I'm also fighting a Diamondback as well, that is on full HP and that thing has got insane DPM, uh, decent gun handling as well, and um, unfortunately he's going to shut me down. I'm trying to track him there to get around him, my team pretty much collapsing all around once again, track him again, fortunately he reloads, he kills me and that is the end of this game. Um, get total, again 160k credits on a defeat which is not bad, still working towards that, sec that, that third mark, and um, with a total damage of 206, 2622 and 1500 assist. Um, again, MVP on my team, uh, though because it's lost, obviously you don't get in the top three, unfortunately, but it's fine. You know, it is what it is. Though, getting to it, we have the final replay of this video, and that is Karnas. Now, Karnas, not a map I, I hate, not a map I love, but it's an okay map all the same. And it's pretty much like the best case scenario for this vehicle, even though it is another tier 9 game. In this battle, I have pretty much enough support. I get really lucky as well, in the fact that the enemy team, well, the enemies I'm fighting don't really know how to deal with the armor, so I get away with a lot more than I really should. And the fact that with it being Karnas and me spawning close to the town, it does mean I can at least take... Make, make, make the most advantage of the mobility I have, though like I say, it still would rather the same get um, some sort of buff to its mobility, whether it's terrain resistance, horse power turn, or anything really, you know, give, give it the E50's engine, you know, give it 1,200 horsepower, whatever, just, just, it just needs that extra mobility, if I'm honest, just to make it a little bit better, um, then perhaps, like I say, get a depression buff, and then, of course, maybe a turret armor buff, though, the turret armor buff would probably be in the lower of the three, um, I lower the three buffs I would like to see just because of the fact that this this thing needs 
does really need a mobility and gun depression buff, primarily. The turret arm you can sort of get away with, like I say, because most people just assume it's super strong, so they just avoid it and shoot yellow plate anyway, so who cares? But it is what it is. So here, you know, say we're on um, hard, um, pretty much hard terrain now, so we're on road. Still not able to go up to 40, even with the fuel active and the tractor control system. You know, we're still hovering around 30 km an hour, just showing how bad the mobility of this thing is in all practice. Uh, see a 432 up ahead, and um, good trying to engage. And then we also see a Corvette 1 as well. So, Corvette 1 is just behind cover, so I decided to move up a little bit to get a shot. Pen is lower plate all as well. And then a 53 TP and a T34 up here on my right. So, I decided, you know what? Leave the Corvettes one to the rest of the team, the best to push these guys. Um, I do take a few shots, luckily they bounce, and then I, the 53 TP does blat me in the face for 400 damage, which is fine, you know, it is what it is. Um, though I able, luckily, to get my DPN to work, I'm at an angle, those guys can't really see my low plate clearly, luckily, uh, so I do get a few lucky bounces there. T54 gets melted by the team, I take him out securing the kill and then move on to the 53 TP, uh, again continuing to farm him for damage. So at this point we're on about 1200 damage, uh, that will quickly tick up uh, to 1400 as of now, so yep that's all good. Um, I do take a few penetrations from the 53 TP which is fine, you know it is what it is, um, just need to try and shut him down as quick as I can and then also build up some assist as well which is nice. So um, there we are. Target eliminated, 1700 damage and 300 assist. Gag Panther ahead of me, he does pen me once though. As I adjust my armor towards him, he realizes he can't really do much to me and uh, backs away. Um, I get a shot into him, try to get another one in, but he backs up just in time. And then we see the M103. And luckily, with the pen buff, this tank did receive from um, what was originally 190 pen to 217, able to get the shot for the low play at the M103 then, pen pretty much with ease. Emil. Um, mill there on the corner, engage him, shoot him once, activate the fuel to back up in time uh, so I can get into some semblance of cover uh, to take him out easy, get another shot to him and then the King Tiger shuts him down and there we are. So Yang Pamper pops back up again, try to take a shot at him, fortunately hit him miss him but I do hit the M03 which is quite fortunate uh, given I was expecting that to be a complete miss. We're on about 2.8k damage here uh, with a crap ton of assists because of the fact that spot on the M103 and then we go for the 430. So the 430 should be a two shot kill. Um, hit him once taking down the 227 and then we hit him again and we lower and he's on a 8, eight um, health left so he goes down to the team but it's fine and um, from here we pretty much push up to engage the IS-3. So like, like I say, the, this vehicle um, really does need some work to it to make it better, though I guess it's better than it was when it first came out, though when it first came out you know, it did have plus two degrees of gun depression, so basically had no gun depression because it was bugged. Uh, never mind the fact that it had even worse DPM than it has now, uh, and that was, you know, prior to, uh, you know, prior to the bus it received around 5.0 and the accuracy and pretty much everything was a lot worse on it in general to be honest um, so it is a little bit better than it was but it's still not competitive enough in my opinion to you know really take on the likes of a Tiger 2 one for one uh, one Tiger 2 um, at least when my build reloads in about 7.2 seconds uh, with for about 320 alpha extremely good gun handling and penetration so you know it is what it is but we we're able to secure the kill on the uh, Yag Panther there um, get a couple shots in the ice before he goes down and be able to bring our damage total up to 3.9k uh, to shy 4k and a our total assist up to 1.8k as well so um overall probably one of the better games i've had in this thing recently um again all those replays are sort of played back to back anyway to be honest so um you know it is what it is and um, we were able to secure four kills as well as block uh, 1500 damage making 264k credits uh and uh, 4,000 experience uh, with only a, I believe, 1.5 times credit boost to active. So uh, it's not the worst thing ever, though this thing, you know, does require you to put a hell of a lot of work to working to uh, get into any sort of position to be, you know, relevant. Uh, we get mastery there as well, and we also get a high caliber and a, I believe, a sniper and steel wall as well. So. Um, Actually, no, no high caliber, that's my mistake. Um, it was a steel wall and a sniper and a mastery. But uh, hey, you know, that's what happens when you, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> during your audio while watching the replay for your tiny little uh, viewing window. But hey, you know, it's what it is. Um, but yeah, like I say, is this tank worth it? Hell no. 
wait for it to get buffs probably or even just you know if you do get it just get it for easy marks of accidents and the novelty of just having the worst one of the worst tanks in the game in my opinion <laughs> but um either way you know thank you very much for watching folks hope you enjoyed and um you know keep it simple out there all right take care thanks for watching